Welcome everyone to Unshe Sword Reviews. I'm Vic. And I'm John. And today we're going to give you our official review of the Todd Cutler German Gross Messer. This is a really exciting sword for us, right John? It's very exciting. Um, as you may have seen or not, we have done an initial impression of it. Our initial impressions were overall positive, but now we want to talk more about it in detail. Maybe the first thing we can do is just start out talking a little bit about what Messers are and the role they played. Yeah, so uh, real quick before you touch on that, if you guys don't know, uh, Todd's Workshop, link in the description below, is a really, really fun YouTube channel. He does all kinds of like really crazy stuff on there. And previously, um, the daggers that came out of the Todd Cutler line were more budget oriented daggers that weren't handmade by him specifically, but I believe he outsourced to a different forge in order to make those more affordable. Now, uh, four swords have entered the Todd Cutler line, this being one of them. All of them subsequently sold out within days of their release, yeah. and I was really fortunate to be able to snag this one. So the swords that Todd normally makes himself are like in the two to four thousand dollar range. This is upper mid range. All the swords are six hundred and eighty U.S. dollars. So kind of similar to the Matt Easton Windless Royal Armories line, what we're hoping for are really historically accurate swords that have good level fit and finish that handle the way they're supposed to and are at a reasonable price. And we're going to let you know if this sword checks all those boxes. Absolutely. And uh, we sort of understand that to bring you something that's historically accurate for a reasonable price, a mid-range price, they have to cut corners somewhere, probably. So we're kind of interested to find out where those are. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. But uh, just to start out real quick, um, Messers in general, if you don't know too much about them, they're really pretty interesting weapons. Uh, they're from the late medieval and early Renaissance period, and no one is really quite sure why they exist. Um, they share a blade typology with Messers. So uh, the Elmsley typology basically is just single-edged blades from uh, late Rena or late medieval, early Renaissance era. And so if you take a sword, if you take a weapon like this and put a regular standard cruciform hilt on it, you have a falchion. Now, if you have this kind of a handle on it, which is essentially a knife handle, you have a messer. And the thing about uh, they don't really know why that was ever done because there's there isn't a substantial difference in functionality. There are some different ways you can use bindings and stuff like that with the way this hilt is designed with the nagel that comes off the side. But they don't think that that's substantially different enough to warrant the construction of a different handle assembly. And they think it might have come down to like a, a copyright issue almost like a guild issue. So essentially, um, if you wanted to make a large bladed weapon like this with but you couldn't call it a sword because there were specific sword makers guilds that you'd be impinging on their thing. Probably they come break your knees like the mafia. <laughs> um, what you what you do is you just call it a knife or messer in German and make it with a knife handle construction and you're good to go. Yeah, that about sums it up, um, which is a really, really funny loophole <laughs> if that's the case <laughs> either way. Right. Um, but yeah, so that you hit the nail on the head. That is essentially what a messer is. Uh, the other defining characteristic on most messers is the nail or nagel yep, that, yep. that goes through the top of the guard right there. We'll show on close-up looks. And uh, there are single-handed and uh, two-handed versions of messers. The two-handed version of messers are called Kriegsmessers. Mm -hmm. um, basically means war knife. Check out our review of the Beller Arms uh, German mm -hmm. Kriegsmesser. Um, but yeah, what we have here is a, a single-handed version. And to me, a very, very aesthetically pleasing one. You talked about the Elmsley typology for falchions and messers, and this is my favorite type of blade in that typology. So I'm really, really excited to get one that looks like this. Interesting. Also, it's worth noting, uh, we had a bit of a conversation when we posted our initial video that we were pronouncing this incorrectly, and so mm -hmm. I looked it up a little bit. And apparently the way you would pronounce this is grosses messer. So because gross means many, like it would be a description of many, whereas grosses it makes it singular. So a gross ass mess error is what this is. And for the uh, remainder of this video, I'm just going to call it a messer because I'm not <laughs> even going to play around with that because I will mess it up. Apologies to all our German followers. All one of you, please correct up. me. I will mess it up. So, ah, oh, you're so punny. Oh, Lord. <laughs> all right. So that's a little bit of info on this sword typology, but let's talk about fit and finish because that's one of the things, one of the areas on this sword that are really, really interesting, right? Yeah. One of the things where they might cut corners. And so for me, the fit and finish on this is pretty good. Um, in terms of the fit, everything is rock solid. Everything is tight. Uh, the, the knuckle bow is really, really uh, firm on there. Like you can't get it to bend or move at all. The nagel is really, really tight, doesn't move. The pommel cap is really well constructed. The scales of the wood onto the full tang. Everything fits beautifully. There's almost no gap in the blade, the base of the blade into the cross guard. From a fit standpoint, everything seems pretty rock solid. Mm -hmm. 
The finish standpoint, uh, it is a little rough for my taste, talking about the hilts. Um, there are some very apparent, uh, you know, hammer marks. There are some pieces of like where the, uh, the blade here, the shoulders come down, looks a little rough. There, there's little tiny bits of handmadiness, for lack of a better term, that I typically don't like on swords. Now, that said, this isn't bad by any means. It's just a little more than what I prefer. That said, though, I've come to appreciate the character that it gives the sword without taking away from the overall aesthetic, if that makes sense. Um, the knuckle bow and the guard have a really, really interesting like diamond shape to them that mm -hmm. I think aesthetically looks very pleasing. Um, the blade itself, uh, and this is, I, I think, a, a point of contention, you like this or you don't, is it has a very mirror finish. And while aesthetically I like mirror finishes, I have a couple of other swords that have that, I think it makes them look kind of bougie. The problem is, if you use your swords, it's not going to stay pretty very long. This sword already is showing signs of usage, just showing scratches and scuffs and all that kind of stuff, dirtying it up just a little bit. So I've come to prefer a satin finish now versus when I first started collecting, I didn't really care for them that sure. much, but they yeah. really hide that kind of stuff better. So overall, for me personally, I think the fit and finish is good. I think it's good enough for the price points, but there are things about it that I'm not a huge fan of. John, what do you think? Um, I want to kind of second everything you just said and kind of build off that a little bit because I think we're right on the same page. Um, I very, like for me, it's like a, a tale of two swords for the fit and finish because I happen to really, really like the handle of this sword. Um, I think it feels exactly how I want it to feel in my hand. Um, Vic's right. There are definitely some signs that it's handmade and it looks like it's handmade, but I like that about it. Um, so, and, and the thing I want to talk about the most about the handle is it just feels like a quality piece of workmanship in your hand. It's like if I were to blindfold you and put you in like a 2023 Toyota Corolla and then put you in a BMW, you would know the difference. Even if you couldn't quite articulate what it was, it's like, wow, one of these just feels like a more expensive, higher value car kind of, not, maybe not in higher value, but definitely like higher, more luxury car. Mm -hmm. When I hold this in my hand, that's what it feels like. And even when I look at it, that's what it looks like to me, as much as it has the handmade aesthetic. But then, like, I feel like the blade takes me out of that because the blade to me looks like it's something from a windless sword, like made in, made, you know, made in India. Like it's right. very shiny, very, very, very shiny, high polish. And it's not that great of uh, in terms of the blade. It's not like perfect. So it, rather than like fitting in with the handmade aesthetic that the handle presents, it actually accentuates the parts of it that aren't great. Mm -hmm. So I think the mirror polish really, really, it was a bad idea for me. But um, beyond that, though, I, I mean, as far as like, I like the way Vic broke it up into fit and finish, because I think fit wise, there's very little to complain about. And finish wise, it's more a matter of aesthetic and taste than anything. But yeah, that's pretty much how I feel. It's like kind of a tale of two different experiences. But uh, the sword does come with a fairly nice scabbard that you get with it. Um, it's not like, you know, for example, like Dark Sword will charge you more for various scabbard options. This isn't that case. You just basically get this scabbard with it. Um, it is a wood core scabbard. It's got a very nice little detail on the end here. Fit and finish wise, I think it's a very nice scabbard. It's probably, well, I don't want to say it's nicer than it needs to be, but it's at least as nice as it needs to be, which is good. Um, and it does the job, which is excellent. It does have a belt that you can put it on you if you wanted to. So, um, and that also can factor into your, you know, whether you think the sword is worth it overall for a purchase. If having a scabbard is something that's important to you, this, this check for this. Definitely. Some people, you know, believe that a sword isn't complete without a scabbard, and this is definitely a complete package that you get. Mm -hmm. That said though, while I am happy with the scabbard and I do like it and I think it is an attractive package, I wouldn't be sad if this sword was $150 cheaper and you can get the option without a scabbard. Because yes. that would put this in the ballpark for a lot more people. I agree with that, absolutely. Especially because I think some people do like to display their stuff in scabbards, which right. is fine. But like for me, when I get a scabbard, it basically goes in the corner in my yep. room and then that's the last I save it until I take the sword someplace. <laughs> Literally though. <laughs> so. so. Yeah, so that's a thing to consider and a thing to keep in mind. Completely agree with that for sure. And there aren't any, as we get into more handling now, none of the design choices that they made create handling issues, which I think is really great. And just, you know, overall handling wise, I was pretty pleased with the way the, the way it handled. Um, if you read the description on the sword, it comes what's called semi sharp which um, both of us kind of hunched that has something to do with the fact that, you know, certain provinces in India, they can't sharpen swords beyond a certain point. It's illegal. So my hunch is that's probably what they're running into here with this sword. So when we first um, cut with it, it handled, eh. you could feel that it wanted to cut, it wanted to do its job, 
but the, the edge just was not sharp enough. It was tearing a lot of the it bottles. Was te- yeah. Tearing the bottles, like it would get a little bit of a cut into it and then tear it the rest of the way. But when you looked at it, it was a very, very thick kind of apple seed edge on it. So, and it really wasn't honed at all. So it's not surprising that that was the case. Mm-hmm. So um, that was my experience with the performance pre-sharpening. Again, Todd doesn't hand make these himself. He outsources, I believe, to a forge somewhere in India. Not sure which one. If you mm-hmm. happen to know, if you found out, uh, let us know in the comments. We'd love to know. Um, I took it to a place uh, locally here in the Seattle area and they touched up the edge and holy crap, <laughs> now all of a sudden it's a little lightsaber. Um, it just glides through everything. Some like bottles, it just goes through almost no resistance. Like you feel absolutely nothing. So I have zero doubts this would chop up pool noodles. This would go right through tatami. Absolutely. This would do anything you want. So now all of a sudden you feel how well this sword handles and just you know stats are in are in the description below but the point of balance is about they listed at about 4.5 we had it at 4.37 which is pretty close uh we had it at 2.3 pounds and we measured the distal taper ourselves and we had that from about six down to about 3.5 millimeters at At the the center center percussion percussion, and then about 2.1 at the very tip and so that makes for a pretty lively sword, right? Lively, but with solid presence, though. It definitely feels like it wants to do what a mess is supposed to do, right. which is chop. You want a little bit of blade presence, yeah. right? But that feels probably what historic examples would be like, right? Yeah, I tend to agree. So yeah, once you once you sharpen this thing, it really gets your money worth it. But the thing to think about, though, is like you're already spending how much is this out of the, out of the gate? So it's 680 US dollars. Mm-hmm. By the time I had it shipped to me personally after taxes, yeah. shipping and a little bit of PayPal's little take there at the end, I was $800. It was 799 and some change. So $800. If I get a sword for $800, I'd like it to show up cutting sharp to my house. And I understand why it can't. It completely makes sense. It's a law in India and that all makes sense. And still, I would prefer an $800 sword to show up so I can cut with it. I agree. And, you know, to be fair, Albions don't show up very sharp and they're high, more expensive than that. But mm-hmm. things like Valiant Armory and Angus Trim Swords show up very sharp. Um, right. So I, I we get that it's, in, you know, like you said, probably a, an Indian law thing. Sure, yeah. But yeah, I'm spending that much money. Now you already have to find a way to sharpen it yourself yep. or pay to have it done. And right. I paid to have it done and it wasn't cheap. Um, and while I'm happy with the performance, that is more money to think about mm-hmm. or more effort or hassle to think about, right? Absolutely. The other, go ahead. Especially like if this is your stretch sword, you know what I mean? Yes. And that's, you're going to spend all your all your sword money for the year on this one particular sword. It's not going to be very sharp until you can afford to get it sharpened. So a thing to be so, aware of for sure. Yeah, definitely. Another little thing on the hand, the only thing I want to touch on is just the grip length itself. Yeah. It is rather short. And while aesthetically, I really, really like it. I like the look of it. Lots of messers tend to have, even if they're one handed versions of the sword tend to have grips that you could really fit two hands on mm-hmm. not that they're meant to be used that way i believe they're meant to be used in binding and stuff like that sure and not counterbalance a, too yeah. yeah not a messer expert by any means and so while i like the look of this aesthetically um in handling i have medium-sized hands and it's almost too small for me to grip properly mm-hmm. like if i try to do anything other than a hammer grip if i try to handshake grip at all like i'm hanging off the back end of the pommel which by the way the pommel cap is also gorgeous but I, I would like it just to be a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. But aesthetically, I, I think it's it's absolutely stunning. So, Yeah, I, I would agree with everything you just said. Um, yeah, just pretty much handling-wise, it's 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 worth swinging around. It's worth If you get a chance, I would definitely try it out. Yeah, I think it's it's fun. It's lively. It has authority. I feel like it moves the way that a messer should probably move. Um, I, think it, I think it does the job once it gets a proper edge on it. So I'm not disappointed by any means in the handling. But all that said... This isn't a cheap sword. No, it is not a cheap sword. Without shipping and all that, it is very much in the upper mid range. After all that, if it gets to you, if you live in the US, you're flirting with high end money. Sure. So, the lack of sharpness considered, the aesthetics and the fit and finish may or may not be your taste considered. Do we think this sword is worth the price tag? John, what do you think? It is so close for me, back and forth about it. Um, I think I'm going to come down on the side of yes. But I definitely think there are enough things about it that I don't love that it, it might be at, like towards the bottom of my list, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I think you're getting a lot for your money. I think it's, a, I mean, obviously we haven't done any destructive testing or anything. Hopefully, you know, some of our friends, uh, <clears throat> Matthew Jensen, uh, <laughs> might do some destru- destructive testing on this sword to see what it's actually made of, to see like what your money actually goes towards. Um, we did notice one of the issues that a potential issue is that on the nagel on this, it's also a rounded pin, which is the same way that the LK Chen um, Baylor, Arms. Baylor Arms one was that some folks, including Matt, had trouble with. So, you know, 
with those things as question marks, I'm kind of a question mark. Assuming they're all fine and it holds up fine under those testing, I would say yes. But it's definitely not a, a hard yes, go out and get it right now. Because again, for me, aesthetically, there's some things that take me out of it a little bit. I, I agree with that. Um, for me, it's also a yes. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very happy with the sword now. I'm happy that I have it. It's one of like the centerpieces of my collection. Because again, aesthetically, I love the way this sword looks and I love the way it handles. But if I were buying this, and if this were, like you said, a sword that I'm stretching for, mm -hmm. I would want to know about the fit and finish and about the blade and all that kind of stuff. And depending on where I fall in that, it might not be completely worth it. Yeah. That said, though, maybe it's not worth it in terms of a messer. Maybe you want that Type 14 arming sword. And if the aesthetics are on par with this fit and finish or the same, all that kind of stuff, then maybe that arming sword is worth it to you where a messer wouldn't be. But right. I definitely feel like you need to be aware of all of these things. Mm -hmm. But so, but yeah, for me, it's a yes. It, it, I, I'm happy that I have it, so. Yeah, um, I definitely think I'll probably end up getting one eventually. I just, the thing that will make me get it eventually is just every time I hold that handle, to me, it just feels like exactly what I want it to feel like. I know Vic finds it to be a bit short for his hand, um, which is odd because I have bigger hands than he does. But for whatever reason, that just sits in my hand very, very nicely. So I think that's what it'll what will sell me on it. It's like, to me, that's like getting into the BMW blindfold. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can just tell this thing feels like it wants to do its job really well in a, in a very, very quality way. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what it is for me that'll probably end up selling me on it. Nice. So yeah, uh, that's our thoughts on this uh, Messer from the Todd Cutler line of swords. I'm looking forward to checking out some of the other swords on that line. I will probably get that Falchion um, at some point mm -hmm. to get my hands on. I'm, I hope you get that arming sword because I want to see what that looks like. So Speaking of arming swords, Vic, uh, what's our next sword that we're going to talk about? Well, you know, John, that's a very good segue there. It's almost like someone gave you that layup. Um, our next review coming up will be of John's birthday sword, mm -hmm. which is the Balor Arms Teutonic arming sword very very interesting type 12 arming sword that would be a lot of fun to talk about exactly check that video out too so and again um that the sword we're reviewing next week is a, is a fairly low price sword and that's because we want our channel to be useful to everybody just because you don't have a thousand dollars to spend on a sword doesn't mean we, we don't think you should get into this hobby and enjoy it so next uh, our next re uh, release will definitely be something that's way more affordable than some of the things we've been reviewing lately we definitely want our channel to appeal to everybody. So we want content that everyone can enjoy. So yeah, absolutely. Interesting sword all the way around. Thank you for watching this video, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Peace. Peace.